Generally speaking, it's going to cost some amount of time, some amount of skin slippage, um, and kind of just slow you down and sap a little bit of like power and precision. Um, with that three finger drag she's using is going to put more force and load on the flexor digitorum profundus. Mm -hmm. Just this little release here is just kind of slow and inefficient. Like one of the reasons people don't like slopers is because they have weak wrists. Back for another anatomy of the climb. That's right, we are. <laughs> Where we look at anatomy. And technique. <laughs> Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Starting off with the beach whale here, or I like, some sort of whale. I like rapid fire. Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I got this. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, well, okay. We Sweet. Double. No, no, no. We we got it. We're Sweet, good. like foot forward, forward start. Yeah. I just I immediately wanted to do that climb because of that start. Yeah. To be honest. <laughs> I wonder if that's like typical or whether he's getting crafty with some long legs or something. Yeah, you know? I'm Every not now familiar and then with, start with the climb, high feet. so. It's a cool name though, the friendly whale. The friendly whale. I yeah. like that better than the beach whale, I guess. Yeah. Oh, you said the beach trail, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of this is done really nicely, but I, I did spot a couple of things. One was uh, just sort of a note, like this is well selected, but um, a lot of times when you do hand heel matches like this, you want to think about how far you set your heel, both because of the quality of the hold and sort of like what is offered as a position, but also the closer to your hands the heel is, uh, the easier it is to sort of like pivot around that point. Hmm. And so when you're trying to generate a way like this, um, it's frequently, like let's say you're trying to go uh, right-handed out of this position like he is, having the foot a little further apart helps fight that rotation so that you can generate more uh, like linearly. Past that, uh, he's on a really nice hold with his hand and his heel, so he's pretty stable. And he uses this, uh, this little bump hold just kind of to adjust and initiate this movement over. Um, so that's good. The downside is what you see happen a lot, especially on uh, poor holds, is that people don't exactly trust themselves, and so they end up with this like little double pump. And so that can be useful, especially if you're stuck in this position, um, so that by pulling yourself away, you kind of fall backwards, and that lets you get into this more straight arm position to pull across. But generally speaking, it's gonna cost some amount of time, some amount of skin slippage, um, and kind of just slow you down and sap a little bit of like power and precision. Almost never do you want to do more than one pump, but it takes some practice to do that. Follow up here, this has come up in some of our other videos, but as he swings around, he's both blocked by his arm, so you got a little little body blind. <laughs> um, can be useful when you know that these kind of positions are gonna be achieved to either tick a hold or tick some portion of the wall uh, that is visible um, to use as a guide. Um, so that's part of it, and he ends up just kind of missing this foot that he's going over to. But the other thing is like, as discussed in some of our other videos, he's sort of doing an L-sit here. He's not turning to face the hold, and he's not getting that scapular, like sort of front lever type scoop going. Um, both of those, along with a better kind of like identifier for the hold, will just let him do this move a little bit more um, precisely rather than having to deal with two foot swings. Very nice palm here, good press. Um, if possible, as you stand up, you want to just like drive through the knee a little bit. That's going to pull your hips up. Zoop. And you're gonna be able to go with just like a little bit more kind of pop and balance on the foot here so he won't be so isolated on that hand. So you see how, because he doesn't have that little pop over, he's sort of falling out as he goes, but he still hits that really nicely and controls everything. So, I don't know, bam pow, all you bud. There you go, look at that. <laughs> Fire. Okay, this is... Rachel Rubens. Rachel Rubens, Takanka yeah. V9. Yep. A pretty shoulder move, good engagement. Mm -hmm. I just like that most of all these moves, except maybe the very beginning, like she actually drops into three finger there. Or she's got a long pinky. Or a long pinky, but, but not <laughs> really having to do a lot of crimping on this yeah. climb. Um, and again, I think this is a bias from like just a lot of people I work with, but everyone wants to just crimp everything. Oh, that's yeah. the official one. Yay. Three finger. Yep. Hit him with the spatch. <laughs> this, is a, this is a V9 and she's not really having to crimp that much. A lot of it's open hand. So yeah. there is a reason to train some open hand too. Not, not just everything crimp. Climbing and Squamish. Southern California, you just crimp everything. <laughs> It's fair. Geographics do matter. Somebody in Squamish. That's quite the wrist quite position. Quite the wrist. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Nice flick there. Good patience. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the cool things about Squamish and Squamish climbers is like how much sort of body anguish can get you up climbs. Um, she does a really good job of kind of staying draped underneath things and being able to move sort of like 
in a smooth, balanced, sort of <laughs> draped position, as you point out, rather than being like super active in the hands. Um, with that three finger drag she's using is gonna put more force and load on the flexor digitorum profundus mm -hmm. um, rather than on the pulley system. It's gonna have a little bit more demand on that muscle itself. So training in that, that open hand or that drag position is helpful. Yeah, you see that a lot with climbers down here because we have so few pockets. People will train essentially like open half and full crimp and then they take that strength to like three finger holds or pocket holds and they just aren't really prepared for it in a way and so end up kind of injuring themselves like that especially with like deeply in cut ring fingers so a lot of times you'll see people be like oh well it's a juggy pocket it's fine and that just kind of lets them put more pressure on the tendons and load more force on it than they're really like prepared for but anyways that's just a long way of saying three finger open hand is useful and yeah. some amount of training is probably good i know a couple of climbers that would probably have uh crimped this so <laughs> yep. you know who you are <laughs> if you can't make a fist is it really rock climbing um so anytime you do a move and there's a little bit of excess momentum like that so she catches it really nicely and her feet are in a uh position here to support it so that like kind of bicycle is really, really nice. Um, she's well set up and opposed on the right hand. But the thing that you can't really see too easily here is that she's keeping her weight somewhat balanced between the two hands. Um, she's not able to sag out too much further in this direction because of how straight the kind of like right arm, or uh, left arm is rather. But, um, but the problem is that she's deeper into the cave than you really want to be. And so when she let goes, lets go of that, she kind of swings out there. And so she controls it really well. It doesn't seem to be too much of an issue. But again, like all this stuff, especially in longer, more physical climbs or anything relatively limit, um, some amount of sliding is a real problem. Um, like kind of physicality and endurance aside, it's going to mess up your skin and that's going to be an issue as things get sort of more limit for you. But um, how all you would do to correct this, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry. So you can see that she she doesn't have much more room this way, but she can sag more this way, and so that's what you're kind of seeing is you want to try to adjust underneath the the hand that you're going to be coming into until you feel yourself starting to unweight the offhand. So it's a little bit like the difference between jumping with two hands when you're doing like a double clutch and going like one two for like a sort of paddle type dyno. So it's like, as you shift over, you want to control the, the, the bottom hand until you feel it starting to come disengaged. So it's like sag, 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 and kind of try to get like all the way set up over here. So at the moment here, she's probably feeling a fair amount of tension through that left foot as she's kind of like digging in and trying to oppose the right hand. But as she shifts a little bit more to the right, this knee is going to open up a little bit more and you're going to get a little bit of a like clamp between these two feet. Um, she's going to feel herself kind of dangling underneath this right hand and that's going to start to disengage the left. As soon as that happens, you'll be able to just kind of like float in. Anyways, depending on how big the hold is and how hard the sequence is for you, you are more or less kind of like necessitated to do these things. But at the same time, it's exactly like flash climbing, like visualizing, like a lot of the things that are maybe not essential in any given circumstance, but by doing it habitually over time, it just gets kind of like baked into your climbing process and everything goes better. Bat cave. Really, really unique climbing in Priestra. I know, I really want to go. Emil's been a couple of times, but mm -hmm. he says I'm not allowed to come with, so. Well, the problem is they have pockets, which you know. I like pockets. No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> That's what he said too. <laughs> not allowed to touch the pockets. Yeah. I mean, just look how many options this, this climb has. Is that a triple bump we just saw? Yeah, yeah. Prop, prop, prop. Interestingly, you could probably just keep on bumping to the, uh, to the finish here. <laughs> I've definitely seen bat hangs on this thing. I mean, hence the name. Oh, well shoot, I feel like, does this count then? I'll have to ask you soon. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of this actually, the kind of neat part if you're, if this is a more challenging climb for you is gonna be maintaining tension from like foot, hip, core into your hands so you're not just gassed by the time you get towards the end and have to pull over or pull out of the lip. If you're doing like an inverted row, like on rings, Put your, instead of like your, all the time, just your heels on the ground or on mm -hmm. the step, use your toes. Yeah, like put your yeah. toes on a step. And so your toes are having to press down, which generates that tension from your, like your toe into your hamstring, into the butt, the back, into the arms. And it really like, it, it's handy to sort of cue all that musculature while you're doing the, the pull through. Um, a lot of times when people focus on like a movement, especially a more intense movement, everything else kind of falls apart while they're not actively thinking about it. So just kind of like, 
the initial repetition there seems to be pretty helpful. So one of the big things that I liked about this, I mean, possibly he's worked it a little bit or maybe he's just good at visualizing, both of which are quite useful, but um, there's very little bobbling with the feet. He just kind of like pivots like bam, 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 bam. But he goes really smoothly from like foot position to foot position doing very little kind of like fishing around. You'll notice a lot of times people will get kind of held up trying to decide where to put their feet, especially on climbs that have so many options. He additionally climbs with a uh, pretty good pace, which I think in general is pretty useful, but especially on something this steep and like kind of physically tiring, moving quickly and efficiently is just super, super useful. The final thing was just this little release here is just kind of slow and inefficient, and it's in a position where he has to clamp quite hard at the feet while also kind of like dangling on the hand. This can be somewhat avoided by turning in the right knee to sort of drop knee a little bit and just lurch through with the right straight up to the top. So you could do this in kind of like one pass, but better yet, given that it's pre-straw, what you can do is just walk your feet around over here and bump left-handed or um, better yet. And for all the style points, walk your feet across and kick a double toe hook. And now you're in just like a, a, a totally relaxed bat hang position. <laughs> Slopes. Yeah. Friction. Yep. So and palm meets. I mean, Really, we can talk about this as we get kind of going. Yeah. I just wanted to include this one because we haven't had a chance to talk about the anatomy that much. The anatomy a of a mantle. Of a mantle. Um, so there's two parts. It's the mantle coming up and even just that first move. Yeah. Like having mobility with stability, so strength yeah. in these positions is going to be advantageous to maintain that yeah, friction. Yeah, good shoulder mobility, good wrist mobility. Yeah. Both of those make me cringe. <laughs> ton of yeah. shoulder extension, ton of wrist extension. You have to be stable in those positions, but having the mobility is clearly advantageous. And it lets him just blast through this. You know, I would say in general, you do not want a mantle with fingers up like that. You no. tend to want to be either uh, uh, like thumb down or well, I don't know. <laughs> you want to be either like turned in or turned out. You don't generally want to be like this. The only other part was obviously the beginning. When the wrist goes into a little more extension, you get a little more like the joint helps lock down. So it creates mm -hmm. more stability that way. When you're here, the joint is more in this like we call like a loose pack position. Yeah. So you can get more movement from the wrist itself compared to here. I'm not engaging anything in muscular right now. Just the position helps lock it in more. So since he is flat, that stability is coming from the muscle like the, the wrist mm -hmm. flexors on both sides, the flexor carpi ulnaris, the extensor carpi radialis, like the brevis yeah. longus. Like one of the reasons people don't like slopers is because they have weak wrists, mm -hmm. like with either, either it's the flexors or the extensors. Yeah. So they don't have that stability and they're com they'll complain of clicking yeah. or popping. Yeah, kind of like sucks in and out. Yeah, yeah, because it's the muscle that has to create mm -hmm. that, that force. When you're climbing on slopers in the gym, uh, especially better slopers, it's frequently advantageous to kind of like wrap or like cup them. Um, but when people are not super strong in these positions and you end up with like sort of ulnar distraction like this, it seems like that really predisposes kind of like pulling, tearing, straining in the um, like TFCC among other things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when people go into these without that wrist stability, that's where they end up developing like either like an extension based like tear to the, the TFCC area or just they get an irritation to the, the flexor carpi ulnaris mm -hmm. because it's being placed under more demand than they're actually uh, able to generate. Sense. Jake Artibello. Artibello. Okay. This is a huge move and that's really precisely done, which is cool. Yeah, tons of like calf and hamstring engagement throughout yep. this first Good clamp on the section. bottom foot. That's yeah. kind of where that those rows Strong row. with yep. the foot on or the, the toes on something can really pay off. Mm -hmm. Work on that tension. Yeah. Ah! And wow. and you know, um, one arm strength doesn't doesn't hurt too much. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nice to have in the bag. Oh, this foot's not really gonna do it. Yeah. You tend to see that like that's that strong position for people with the one arm, like he, he kind of stabilizes and then once he gets to a point where he's in basically like a neutral mm -hmm. pull-up position, yeah. that's when he feels comfortable letting go. Yeah. It is a, a strong position for the shoulder. That like almost like quasi boxer grip. Yeah. I point out with a lot of people as far as training, it's like you don't necessarily need to get all the way in here, but being kind of like in the scapular plane rather than way back or way forward tends to play pretty nicely. But also just, you know, a little bit of uh, confirmation bias. But um, you see how he, Jumps to it, looks really good, shoulder set, shoulder set, shoulder set, 
as he starts to kind of cruise over here to try to put the foot on, the shoulder kind of swings up as like a little ear muffy, not bad, but like it's clearly a bit elevated. And then boom, sets back down and like right as it sets, you can see it drop down right there. That's when he kind of like stabilizes and is able to kind of comfortably come in. Puts himself in a more mechanically advantageous position, you'd say. Huh? Yeah. If you're interested in getting coaching from Dan, that information will be available in the uh, description below. And if you want your video to be featured, make sure that you are subscribed and following us on Instagram. That way you'll see those call outs when we need more videos.